Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore some of the biggest challenges facing this country and the region. In today's program, we continue following the arrest of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and now the arrest of Ola Bini, accused of being a spy and working for WikiLeaks. We'll take a look at all the lies and inconsistencies in his case and why this seems like a witch hunt against everything related to Assange. To discuss this, we have Ola Bini's parents, Doug Gustafsson and Yorel Bini, on their first exclusive interview for Telesur. But first, let's take a look at this video. Prosecutors have said they intend to charge Olabini with hacking related crimes and have ordered him detained for up to 90 days while they comply with evidence. However, Doug Gustafons and Gordel Albini say their son's rights are being violated. They say he has not committed any crime and so should be free. We also want to ask authorities in Ecuador to release him as we are certain that he is innocent of what he is being accused of. We want to plead also to Swedish authorities and politicians to help us as much as they can with this. We ask for your help to spread the word and build support for Ula. Bini's attorney is also rejecting charges painted against his client. Well, he says the 36-year-old Swedish programmer is in good health at this time. He still does not understand why he has been accused of helping hack computer systems. The attorney says Bini did have a relationship with Assange, but he had no involvement with WikiLeaks. The only link between my client and Julian Assange is friendship, because they work in computer development. He has no links to WikiLeaks. He has never worked for or with WikiLeaks. All he had was a personal bond of friendship with Assange. Ecuador said on Monday it has suffered 40 million cyber attacks on the web pages of public institutions since the stripping WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange of political asylum. On April 11th, Ecuador went from the 51st to 31st in the world in terms of statistics showing the volume of cyber attacks. Meanwhile, Groups in defense of the protection of free software and digital activity in Ecuador and around the world have strongly condemned Bini's arrest. They say due process was not followed. It is worrying that due process has been violated. It is public knowledge that the lawyers did not have access to their client. The airport is not the right place to arrest someone. They should have taken him to the detention center the same day. Obviously, there are problems with the way things were handled by the authorities. Bini's relatives also say they do know former Foreign Minister Ricardo Patiño, who has been linked to this case by the current Interior Minister Maria Paula Romo. Romo claimed to be in possession of flight records, which allegedly show that Bini and Patiño were on the same flights. In light of this, the Attorney General's office has asked for a new hearing for Patiño. Denise Herrera, Telesur Quito, Ecuador. So thank you, Doug and Yorl, for being with us. So tell us, who is Ola Bini and why has he been arrested in Ecuador? Ola Bini is, is a 36-year-old man, very passionate in his computers, and he's a very nice, well-known uh, well person. He has a lot of friends, very warm friends, and he's passionate of what he's doing. And the most important is our boy. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So why is the Ecuadorian state, Ecuadorian government, saying that he was a spy, uh, he was trying to um, sabotage the Ecuadorian government by working with WikiLeaks? Is that true? No, that's not true at all. Why? Um, can you explain a bit of what he did? We read a lot about him. He, he said in many of the speeches that he gave here in Ecuador, in many of the countries that he worked, in, pro in computer programming, that he wanted to defend people in the internet. He wanted to protect yes. the, the data of the people online. Yes. Why is that a crime then? It's not a crime, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Because what he's doing uh, as a professional is, is passionate about the digital aspects of fundamental human rights as personal integrity and freedom of speech. And all his work, developing and so on, goes out from that. 
And did he ever speak to you about his work in some of the countries that he was working on? What did he say about what he enjoyed doing, what he loved doing? Yeah, he loved doing these things to develop and going further and making these programs to protect, protect information and data, which is the contrary to what he has been accused of. So. Mm -hmm. And you've visited him in prison. Uh, yes. Can you explain to us a bit of how the conversation went with him? Where is he? How is he? We are, a lot of people are worried about his safety. And yes. And he is in Alinka. And uh, Ola is worried too, of course, because he, he is arrested for something. He don't, uh, he haven't done it. So he don't understand why he's, why he's arrested. Um, in Alinka, it's a hard situation for all of the prisoners, not just Ola. Uh, they can see daylight three uh, days a week. Mm. Uh, they have water five hours a day, and that's cold water, and they cannot drink it. So people have to uh, bring them water, their relatives. Uh, and uh, there's more. They uh, have no beds. They are laying on a madras on the floor. No, not a madras. They have 17 madrasses uh, for 95 people. Yeah. So the other one is on, uh, what do you say? Yeah, directly on the floor. Yeah. Directly on the floor. Mm. What does he say about his fears? What does he think is going to happen? Uh, he don't know that. Uh, he wants to be free because he, he, he hasn't done that. He's accused of. So he's, this is the only thing he thinks of, getting yeah, free yeah. And, and justice. And the fear is, of course, that he will be forgotten or will be condemned to a longer detention, whether he's guilty or not. And you've spoken in other interviews that he did have some friendship with Julian Assange. He visited at some points. Um, yes. Yes, he is a friend of Assange and he has visited him a couple of times since 2013, I think, when he learned to know him. And they, of course, they are working in this digital world and have a lot of common threads to speak of. But Ola has never been involved in WikiLeaks or other things with Jul Julian Assange because the only relation he has to Assange is that he is his friend. And de therefore also he has visited him to look after him and see his well-being and so on. And um, has he ever spoke to you about um, the actual moment where he was arrested? What happened during those moments that few people know? Uh, which moment do you mean? When, when, when was Ola arrested. was arrested? Yeah. Yes, when Ola was arrested. Yes, he spoke to us about that. And it happened a lot of things. <coughs> Who wasn't... Um, yeah, uh, yeah. The w there is a many things that went wrong yeah. in the protocol when arresting him. Yeah. At first, he did, didn't get his rights read in his native language. With Swedish. Yeah, we Swedish. should have been in Swedish. Yeah, yeah which is... As far as I know, and the lawyer says, is by law you, you are obliged to do that. That's one thing. Another thing, he didn't get um, to know what he was accused of for a very long time, long time after. That, that also should be done within certain hours, and this was passed with a lot of hours. He didn't get to meet the lawyer, in the, in, in the time he should have been, a lot later. And also, when a foreigner is arrested, the consulate or embassy should be notified immediately. And that happened 15, 20 hours later. So, and also, the evidence of his arrest is, is a book of Noam Chomsky a couple of, or a lot of, USB sticks, and that he has several computers. 
that is all evidence. And nothing of this could be any evidence that a crime has been committed. Which anyone could have several computers and some USB sticks. Many states. people have. Many of Ola's friends have already put up pictures. Look at my electronic equipment and my computers come and arrest me. So. And so you've had a lawyer here in Ecuador that's been helping you with the case. What does he say about the possibilities, uh, the next steps for the process? He's now uh, been detained for the past two weeks. Mm. He has been sentenced for 90 days in prison. Yes. How will you fight that? What is the strategy? The next step is that uh, the lawyer has uh, done is this appeal to have a new hearing about this arrest. So in uh, my second, there will be a second hearing about this arrest and the accusations and the evidence. And the, the lawyer, yeah, of course, he will lay, from, lay in front all, all these misdoings, wrong, wrong things that has been done in the arrest and the lack of evidence and of course, his goal is that Ola should be free. That this is not the case. And we will stay for that day. Yeah, we will be here and see yeah. the judge. So you were, you were not here in Ecuador when the arrest happened. No. You uh, heard about it or you were communicated about it when you were in Sweden. How did that process go? How did you know about the arrest? We were, yeah. we were having a call from a friend of Ola and she said he was arrested. It was another person, another friend of Ola, who Ola called to uh, in that time. So she called around and she called us to say that. Yeah. And you flew here as soon as you heard? Yeah, yeah. just a couple of days. We, we yeah. get, get to know this late Thursday night Swedish time and uh, Monday, morning. On, on Monday morning we flew down here. Yeah. So if the court actually goes through and accuses Ola and said that he was working with WikiLeaks on uh, achieving illegal files. Does has lawyer or anyone in the courts said that what a possible sentence could be? Like how many years could he be in prison, or if, if that ever comes to, to happen? The only thing we know is that what has been uh, published that it could be a sentence of three to five years. But five years. since he ha since he haven't done anything of that and. There is no evidence that a crime has been done. Could uh, there be like an extradition process, like with the same case of Assange, where a lot of people are talking about his possible extradition? We don't hope so. No. no. We, we hope he will uh, get free as soon as possible. Yeah. So, so you're, you're confident with the laws in Ecuador that they could reach? We hope that he gets a fair trade. Yeah. But it must be a fair trial, trial, because anything else is outrageous, is wrong. So we've seen also that um, the embassy of Sweden has had to uh, had some actions in this. Has there been any support from them, from diplomacy in your country as well? Yeah. Yes. yes. We have now this uh, Saturday uh, the Swedish government. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs called the ambassador of Ecuador in Stockholm to talk about this case and have clearance in what they are doing with Ola. So hopefully they take actions and we don't know so much because on that level, on the diplomacy level, they don't say what they are doing. They say they are doing things. And hopefully they are doing things to help Ola mm -hmm. in this situation. And we really believe that. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of reports here in Ecuador, of course, about the arrest. And there's also some reports in the New York Times, in different media in the US. How is the report in Sweden? Has there been any coverage of this? Yes, there is a l quite a lot of coverage. Yeah. There are a lot of almost every big newspaper writes about this and keeps track on what is happening and also the at least two of the Swedish TV channels. 
So there's a lot of coverage. Uh, we got we got call from the journalists in Sweden every day nearly. Mm. Yeah. Who writes about it? Yeah. And do you think this this coverage, this newspapers and TV channels talking about it, will help Ola's case? We hope that it will put pressure on on your government here in Ecuador, <laughs> so they are pushed to do the right thing about this. The only thing, the most important thing is that he should have a fair trial. Isn't there any evidence for that a crime has been done by him? Then he should go free. And what I've presented so far, there isn't any. So, and did Ola ever speak to you about what he was doing here in Ecuador? Did he? Yes. yes. Because we have quite, quite good contact. We are talking with him via Skype or FaceTime every week. And also when he was doing his travel, travels for work, he often went to Europe and often tried to get a couple of days at our place in Sweden. And also we have been visiting him here for at least three times, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. since 2013. So we have quite a good contact. And maybe I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Can you tell us then a bit more about his work? Did he ever talk to you yeah. about he w what he was doing here in Ecuador? It seems that he really liked living here. Yes, he l loved this country and he won't want to stay. Hopefully he can do it after this. Oh. We don't know about his work. Yeah, in general terms, because he, his work and what he is doing is on a very high technical level, so we don't understand so much of it. But, but it's deep down in this cryptography and privacy on the internet and different things that on a conceptual level we know what he has been doing and is doing. Did he ever talk about which companies he worked for or yes. with the work that he was yes, doing here? Yes, of course. And for almost 10 years, he was employed by ThoughtWorks, a USA-based big consulting company. firm. Yes. Yeah. So I think 2007, he, went, he started to work at ThoughtWorks. And uh, in, London, in London. In London, first mm -hmm. year in London, yeah. And then he went back to Sweden and for one year or so they started a small office in Sweden as well. But there wasn't so much interest. So uh, they cut down that office. And after that, I think, two to 2009, yeah. I think he went to then to Chicago. And then for five years he worked for ThoughtWorks in Chicago. And then 2013, um, the opportunity or this, they Photoworks were opening an office here in Quito. And as a senior senior developer and very skilled in this matter and amongst other things, he was asked to follow follow to Quito and help to start up the office here. And he and his former wife was very yeah, comfortable with that because they found Ecuador and Quito, a nice place to stay, and also they felt, yeah, interesting and good to find a new environment and learn Spanish and so on. So he was a, a very known programmer. A lot of people respected yes, him. Yes. He had work, and yes, he has it been was for a long time. So why do you think it would be a, a bit awkward to understand why a person like him that has all this experience? would uh, st start venturing into something illegal or try to get um, documents like he's been uh, charged with or uh, accused of and not have an idea of why he could be uh, followed by, the, by any government. He hasn't had any of these problems in the other countries that he worked with. No, no problems. So do you, how do you think he, will, he could have reacted maybe another way, maybe a way to protect himself could he have seen it coming? Maybe. Well, he didn't saw it coming. No. We talked uh, with him the day before he was arrested, and yeah. uh, he was so happy because uh, he was going to Japan for this training camp. Yeah. 
and he, he really didn't saw it coming. Uh, so I don't know uh, how should he had uh, reacted on the other way. Uh, I don't believe Ola had reacted on another way because he felt he has done the right thing. Yeah. And how do you see the future now? Do you see yourselves continuing here, continuing to fight this? How long will it take? What are your thoughts? Our fight will continue, but after this hearing, second of May, we have to go home and uh, yeah, fix some other things in our private lives. The rest of our lives that's, that are paused at it's this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, if you're still in prison, we will continue the opinion and the work for putting pressure to get things right. And we are pl planning to come back yes, in course, to July him. to meet him again. Yeah. And hopefully he's out then. Mm. And of course there's a lot of coverage, as we said, on international media. Um, how do you see him reacting to all this support? There's also, there were a lot of marches here in Ecuador against the, when they removed the asylum to, to Assange. Mm. Uh, do, you see, do you see him at least knowing that there's support on his cause? It's a strength for him when he realized, realized it. At first he had trouble to understand that there were, were so much support. But now I think you know it and yeah, it's good for him to know. There are mm. many people fighting for him. Yeah, and he's so happy about it. And he thanks all people who support yeah. him. Yeah. And we will also do that uh, because we have had a lot of support here in Ecuador yeah. uh, from people on the street, in the queue uh, outside El Inca. Yeah. And people really supported us. And it yeah. have felt so good. And that's the people that are supporting all that. But what about the government? Do you see yourself maybe putting um, a legal action against the government of Ecuador, against this Ecuadorian state for his arrest? Because you're saying that there's a lot of inconsistencies in his arrest, he was uh, accused of things without evidence, he was denied his trip to Japan, he was uh, searched inside his house, all these things that don't add up in his Right, Right case. now we are only aiming to May 2nd and what happens then. What we will do afterwards, we have to discuss with his lawyer and so what we are going to do, but maybe, yeah could be one thing to do. And if he ever walks free, what do you see him doing when he comes, goes back home? Continuing his work, because that is yeah. the most important thing he has to do to guarantee privacy and safe com communication on the internet. That is his life mission, and he will continue that. He's very clear about that. Do you see any consequences of his arrest here in him following his work, continuing working there? It's hard to say, but whatever happens, he will continue this work. Thank you very much for your time. I know it's a hard thing to talk about. It's very difficult since you're the parents and you have to live a son being arrested abroad and being charged for something that he didn't do. Mm. But thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for let us come and talk about our son. Mm. That's everything, all we want to do is that get our boy safe. So we've been talking to Doug Gustafsson and Jorl Bini, Ola Bini's parents, on the future of his son after the government of Ecuador arrested him and accused him of being a spy. His defense says that this is a blatant lie and a witch hunt for being sympathetic with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. We hope the truth comes out in his case. Thank you for watching. This is Interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time. In the midst of a political crisis, this April 28th, the Spanish people go to the polls to participate in parliamentary elections and elect the new representatives of the government. Telesur offers you the most complete coverage of these important elections through our website in Spanish and English and social networks. Coverage Spain Decides 2019, only on Telesur.
the news source of Latin America and the Caribbean. Es que una vez que la retirada del Reino Unido se produzca de la Unión Europea, la relación de Gibraltar con la Unión Europea, la relación política, jurídica y hasta incluso geográfica, pasarán por España. Sería, yo creo que un desastre, un desastre cultural, un desastre para familias, porque todos tenemos familiares o si no en Gibraltar, en España, en el campo de Gibraltar. Para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. To keep myself healthy, I study. Ya nadie te hizo y es teléfono asustado. Para mantenerme saludable, yo bailo. Para mantenerme saludable, yo purifico mi espíritu a través del cuerpo. ¿Y tú? Get your body. Tuesdays, only on Telesur.